My name is Clayton Mays. I've been an architect in High Point since 1956. I come originally from the upstate of South Carolina, where I was born in a community called Fair Play in Oconee County, in the, which is the county most, nor, both, most northwestern in the state. So we border Georgia on one side and North Carolina on the other. I uh, entered the world just in time to experience the Great Depression first decade of my life was uh, largely during that time, and the second decade was during World War and shortly after. I think I could almost say I became an architect by default because I knew very little about profession, very little about what school would be like, very little about how practice would be. I mainly attributed it to a high school math teacher who made a chance remark one time that I probably could be an architect. Um, I enjoyed all of the um, arts and music related activities at school. I liked the uh, productions on stage. Um, most anything that had to do with color and painting. Uh, there were not that many opportunities, but nevertheless, I did like to sketch and draw. So I believe that probably is what led her to make that re remark. <clears throat> Also, I had an aunt who gave me advice once when I was very young to have a profession. And at that time, I didn't even know what a profession, what that word meant. But she was planting a seed of thought that in her mind, at least, it was important to have a, a profession in life. Anyway, the uh, other point I would like to make is that I did not always know I wanted to be an architect. In fact, as I said earlier, I didn't know even exactly what that was. But some people seem to always know that they wanted to be a physician, they wanted to be a lawyer, they wanted to be a teacher, or, or somebody, some particular field. Uh, that was not true in my case. However, I lived in the uh, vicinity of Clemson University, and uh, in fact, I was the same county at that time. So when time came to pick a career, and in, enroll in college, that's where I ended up. And uh, after about the third year, I began to understand a little more about what it was I had gotten myself into. I really did not know that it, uh, the long hours, the late nights, all the rush activity to get a project finished up and, uh, and turned in was gonna become a way of life. That's what happened as I got out into the, to the real world. With, with modernist architecture, um, that's a term we really didn't use, and, and um, I don't know when it came in, into vogue, but our term was more likely to be contemporary architecture, and a lot of people just simply said modern architecture. Many of our clients in those days would talk about wanting a modern house or a modern piece of architecture, but just not ultra modern. That was the uh, that was the end all. Don't don't give to something that's ultra modern, whatever that means. So um, I opened a practice with a partner named Robert Griffin Parks, who is now deceased, and he was from Hickory, grew up in Hickory, North Carolina, and was also a Clemson graduate. Unique factors of modernist uh, design. Uh, as far as I was concerned, or am concerned, uh, and going on with my experience, it was simply designing houses in particular from inside out, and beginning with the site, site orientation, where, where the compass was, what kind of exposure, what kind of uh, things would be coming to play on the outside of the house. And of course, in those days, it was not a question of being air conditioned or superbly heated. It was just simply uh, a house that you hope to keep ventilation and have it cool enough to live in. So the, the fact that you uh, had very few rules, I would say, to follow, and you were free to design open spaces, spaces that flowed together, spaces that tried to uh, fit the needs of the family, of the size of the family activities uh, that they enjoyed, um, whether they entertained a lot, had a lot of, of folks around. 
all the things that go into daily living would be what we tried to find out when we started to design a house. Is some of the things that we were fond of saying in those days is that, uh, and you've probably heard, form follows function, uh, the devil is in the details, you design with response to the site, uh, and as I said, the freedom from rules and regulations, ornamentation, scale, color, proportion, all those things were relatively uh, abstract, but it's still free from uh, having to go by traditional rules for, for traditional design. But doing public relations activities, trying to make yourself known in the community, um, we found that uh, in our employment in other offices, that's, that's the only thing, those are the only things you don't get any experience at in terms of being instructed by the, uh, the architects that you might be working for or under supervision. Uh, is, it's just simply not shared. So uh, you had to learn how to budget time, how to charge adequate fees, and how to tell if they were adequate, how to manage a design office, and I guess the biggest challenge of all was simply learning to be a business. Because all of our education and, and work in other offices up to this point, or that point, was had to do with, uh, with simply enjoying design, client relations, working with clients, and, and producing work. But it had very little impact on making a living, paying the bills, get, having cash flow that uh, supported the activity. So we had to learn to be a business and that probably was still lacking when I retired. I learned how to be a business and make a decent living. I think some of the most rewarding aspects from my experience were simply enjoying the uh, the person-to-person -person relationship with their, with their clients and particularly again in residential work, which by the way in my practice only lasted a, doing residential work entirely was almost entirely at least was only about uh, five years I suppose five or six years in our practice here and we came to realize that if the client expected us to deliver perfection we were going to do everything in the world that we in our power to deliver deliver perfection uh, at least in our estimation of it but that requires you to do drawings over and over and over and revise and revise and cater to the whims and wishes of the client. So we came to realize that we're never going to be able to pay the bills and get ahead and raise our families on that kind of activity. Although we did have some wonderful experiences in, in residential design and working some wonderful clients. and. Uh, I think that's one of those rewarding things is to be appreciated by the client and trusted. We always have some clients who suspect every move you make, every material you plan to use, everything you decide uh, or, or promote or, or recommend, rather. Uh, you sort of suspect, and uh, I don't know if that has a name or not, but the, the few clients, <clears throat> few clients that were seemed extremely well pleased and cooperative and felt like we they came to us with for a reason and that was because they thought we could provide what they needed and wanted so I think that's uh, the most rewarding aspect and then of course if you can produce a work that satisfies yourself and the client and hopefully is attractive and pleasing uh, and fills the need then that's probably a very successful piece of architecture, even if maybe nobody else recognizes that. But to have a functional building and then moving on to, uh, as we did, into other categories of design, we carried that same attitude and that same feeling of wanting to understand what it was the, the client's needs were, uh, what they wanted of us, and what the site limitations were, the budgetary limitations were and all the other factors 
entering into it. And then if you could produce, like I say, a school, a church, a municipal building, whatever, commercial, whatever it might happen to be, uh, <clears throat> we've always approached the thing, our work that way and, and hopefully it would, uh, would come out to be a satisfactory design and one that would serve the, the uh, client well for years to come. We did find that uh, working for uh, corporate boards and public boards, particularly in school design, which was one of our major categories later, that uh, they were easier to work for because they were, this was not their personal mansion that they had always dreamed of. It was not quite so crucial to them to have every door placed exactly right or every window or every other aspect of the design in a particular way. So the, uh, we were able to then eventually improve our cash flow and our financial position. Some of the architectural education today thoughts that I have, have had, and, and this is based on having practically no knowledge of how the curriculum is set up or exactly what the students do now, I, I just know it's vastly, vastly different from the days when actually I had my first, my first class in at Clemson was in 1946, and this was just after the war. Uh, the veteran students were returning under GI Bill, and those that had been in school before were coming back. And so, in our case, we had a one of the largest classes that had been at Clemson up to that time. Well, there quite a variety on campus and all the night classes, uh, stretching every facility to accommodate all the influx. So it was a, looking back, I can see it was a lot of bedlam going on, but I didn't recognize it at the time. I just didn't have a background to know. Speaking though, from my own experience and as someone who started out uh, pushing pencils, so, so to speak, and I think we had on one mechanical pencil, and in those days, the mechanical pencils even had full-size lead as if they were going to be inside of a wooden pencil. And we used a lot of wooden pencils, and particularly for uh, sketching, renderings, and pre presentation drawings, as well as uh, production drawings, working drawings, where you had to sharpen the pencil and sandpaper it and get it pointed and go from there. So nowadays with the advent of CAD assisted drawing and all the things you can do, the uh, three-dimensional design, you can do, do your design as I understand it and look at it from all directions, bird's eye, in, inside, outside, move through it and show the client how it's going to be as well as yourself. No more building of models and uh, and providing uh, renderings or pictorial uh, representations of your design, which was a big part of my early years in other offices is one that I did. And in our own practice, we typically started out uh, providing a full-scale perspective drawing of every project we did and charged nothing for that. Just That was just, you know, just part of the service. I would say if I had to give tips or advice to the, to the students today, uh, I believe it would be the main thing would be to do everything you can to uh, avail yourself of every opportunity for all the kinds of different things that, uh, that you can find time in your schedule to do, whether you think it has anything to do with the practice of architecture or not, and to seek out and insist on a good advisor who will guide you through the process of the courses you really must take, not just what's on the curriculum, but things that, that are, are known to be so helpful, but things that we have little knowledge of that I've often thought we needed to have had a course in law, we needed to have had a course in accounting, a course in uh, business administration, um, all the cultural aspects you can get, music appreciation, art appreciation, uh, literature, the, the humanities, I can't think of anything that doesn't have come into play somewhere. We we're fond of saying that, well, I don't see any need that, I don't think that I'll ever use that course. 
whether you will use it or not remains to be seen, but if you can get it inside your head, then you've got it, or at least you know how to go and find it. And I, I think that's the uh, big gap that, uh, that I found in my educational experience. Uh, and of course, I could have gone back to school, I could have had more uh, opportunities that way, but I did not manage to do that. The other thing we might say is don't expect to work in the profession, particularly if it's a practicing architect doing an individual practice in a firm. Don't expect it to be glamorous and always fun. Uh, don't expect the projects to move smoothly and, and rapidly. Uh, expect there to be a lot of uh, what I call the grunt work of getting a project done, uh, the redoing of projects, um, all the aspects that you may not like as much as design, production drawings, writing specifications, which incidentally gets very much into the legal aspect of things, uh, being familiar with bond work and insurance, what insurance companies can, can and will do. And the last thing I think I would say is just to be in charge of your life and value uh, what you have, what you have to offer. Uh, don't be afraid to decline a commission and don't be afraid to walk away from one. By all means, determine what you think is fair and equitable and what you think the, the complexity of the project demands. Explain it to the client that way and what you would charge, how you would go about determining fees and then put it back in his lap. If that's not what he's looking for, then let him have the ball and tell you what it is he would like to have you do. But I think the biggest gap we had in, in those days was fear of not having enough work to do and fear of not gaining new commissions to replace the old because you're immediately out of business if you get a project out on the street, so to speak, or bids and construction then everybody's sitting around looking at each other about what to do next. We said to each other a lot, most of the time the modernist approach lends itself to that, that uh, you can experience the space and how it's arranged and the feel of volume. And, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, for example, liked to take you into a structure with a very, very small space, as I'm sure you probably know. And then once you get through there, it just kind of explodes in front of you and then you go from there to some other experience where it closes back in again and then it opens up again so it's kind of like a an adventure particularly the first time or two you go to a, a house or a building and uh, we were years ago some years ago we were in, in uh, had a chance to to go see falling water in in Pennsylvania and uh, in fact if parts of it were under, still under construction and and rescue operations. But I had seen that house from the time it was, practically the time it was built in a publication after publication after publication. And uh, it was just, uh, I don't know how to describe it, it was just such, such a moving experience to actually be in it, you know, and see it. And some of the little hallways and stairs inside, fairly narrow and small, but then you would be exonerated if you get through that. Uh, and I, the story was, I'm told, many, has been told many times about how the, the house came to be on that, that view over the creek, so to speak, where it gets its name, Falling Water. And the owner, that was not what they visualized. And you may, I may be telling you things you know by heart, but uh, they expected the house to be placed so they could look at and look at the water instead of having it go rushing by right under them. You have to look over the balcony and see the creek. But it's it's a gorgeous place, and uh, that's a, a way of being able to. Uh, I guess I don't think I don't know what it is. Our architecture wouldn't be called modernist probably, but uh, it's certainly not traditional. And the fact that he favored organic, we used to call it organic design because nearly everything was natural a lot of rock, stone, brick, wood, glass, and, and concrete properly done. Uh, that's basically, it's still, still all these houses that I've seen have that 
each plus the decorative glass, stained glass inserts in the windows, custom designed furniture, which are not very comfortable, but fits right in and looks great. Uh, so those are the kind of things that uh, used to inspire me when I was doing, trying to learn to do housing design. And incidentally, in, in college, I don't, I don't really recall we were ever assigned a residence to design. Seems odd to think about, but, but they worked us directly into bigger projects uh, or more, just practically anything but residential. And then we had to learn to do construction drawings for residential, but we didn't design a, a, build, a house and then do the construction drawings that, that was fed to us. So uh, very interesting how that, that was done. In those days there, they simply wrote up a description of a project, usually be like a one page, and it would tell all the particulars that they want you to design to. And then, uh, you just get busy and worry, worry, worry about how to get, get something that complies with all those restrictions and parameters. So uh, I don't have any idea how they do it now, but uh, the different disciplines I understand work together in, uh, uh, for instance, at Clemson, they have a, a, a fairly recent building where all the studio spaces uh, they look down and over and out on each other and you go through the whole building you just find clusters of people working on projects and it might have some structural folks and some landscape design folks and, and architecture people and uh, professors who are very very hands-on nowadays uh, they say and uh, so it's uh makes you want to go back and do it again and do it right or do it, do it better maybe not right but better so you know, you're supposed to be very wise after you've come this far, but uh, I feel like I know almost less about it now than I ever thought I did before. It's, uh, it's so much that needs to uh, be addressed, and a lot of architects uh, are supposed to have a reputation of wanting to affect daily life, affect culture, affect social change by how they design, and I, I never have seen quite how that's supposed to happen or what it is one does to uh, try to achieve that. You know. For me, it was enough just to try to get a commission, find out what the needs and the budget were, and then produce it somewhere close to the time the client would like to have it.